All right, guys, we are live. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to episode five of the Shooter's Mindset. We got my co-host, as usual, Steve, over at Making Master Class. Thanks for joining. Always. We, we got a three. I like to call a Three Gun Nation special. We got the three current Three Gun Nation champion, uh, Keith Garcia, in the house. Thanks for joining us, Keith. And we got. Um, Anderson with an E, Chris Anderson. Um, both of these guys are grandmaster pistol shooters, the cream of the crop, Team Vertex. These guys are, are the man, and I'm glad to have them on board this this show. And obviously your host, PR Chico 520, Anthony again. Um, so we're going to, guys, keep the questions, live questions rolling as usual. Um, I guess I'll start off with the first question. Um, probably it's a usual question I usually ask everybody I have on the show, but the importance of dry fire um, and physical fitness to improve your shooting ability. You guys, well, I'll take tell it you, away. I'll, I'll take the dry fire one. Chris can take the <laughs> fitness one. Um, you know, guys, dry fire is essential. In three gun, it just goes over the top. In handgun, you really have to do it to get better. I mean, you've got you got to have the reps. You got to be consistent. You got to do it every day. I, I tell all my students, do one thing every day to improve your shooting. Dry fire is huge because you can actually get better. Now, when you jump in the arena of uh, three gun, now you've got three guns you've got to get proficient with. So it's literally three times the amount of uh, of work you got to do. So uh, you got to load the shotgun. You got to figure out how to, uh, you know, dry fire the rifle and, and load it and move with it. And what I've done to, to make that a little more interesting, I've added on uh, the aspect of airsoft, so I can actually shoot something and knock it down to my garage. So the, air, the dry fire is not quite as monotonous. And how often, since we're touching on dry fire, how often do you usually recommend? Would you just take a ballpark? You know, everybody's answer is probably different here, but. You know, once a day for 15 minutes a day, once a day for an hour. What do you what do you got going over there? You know, when you're first starting out, I mean, we all start with pistol. I, I don't think too many people just jump right into a three gun. So you, you shoot pistol, you try and figure out that game, and it's a tough game because the competition's real stiff. So you need to do five to ten thousand reps before you can get good at something, something that's uh, you know done with your hand-eye coordination. So you need to do a lot initially, but uh, our game tends to breed uh, some some problems like tendonitis. So if you my recommendation to people is do as much as you can handle, but always warm up first. Uh, initially, when you're trying to learn how to draw, and you're trying to learn how to reload your pistol, and you want to draw on the move and do all your surrender positions, etc., it takes time, and you're not going to learn it overnight. Uh, be realistic. You know, uh, read a book, watch a video, take a class, learn the proper techniques, and then it's going to be incumbent upon you to take the time to actually learn how to do the uh, the skills and learn how to do them at a subconscious level. That means five to ten thousand repetitions for anything you want to get good at. So at this point now, after do, after shooting for ten years, I can do it you know ten minutes a day, you know three four times a week, and maintain my skill level. Whereas before I would do it an hour a day just to get to the skill level. Right. That's a good answer. Uh, I think a lot of it is, is you know, where you want to go, what you expect to accomplish or hope to accomplish, and then, you know, how that matches with, um, you know, your schedule, your work, your family life, and everything else. But uh, I completely agree, you know, initially, a lot. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a big balance. And, you know, to the, to the fitness question, um, I like to try and incorporate both, you know, ideal as much as possible. Um, one of the things about 3-Gun, particularly the outlaw matches, is, uh, you know, I think fitness can play a, a huge factor, can be a, a, a big factor in that game. Um, pistol and some of the smaller bay type matches, you know, you don't have the physicality that you can have at a, at a big match where you may have to run 75 yards and then, and then shoot a 400-yard rifle shot, you know, things that start to bring fitness into the equation. And, and um, Keith and I are both probably two of the bigger airsoft guys in the shooting sports, and I, that's been something that... I started uh, right when I got into the sport. I, I kind of found airsoft, and, and I actually had a shoulder injury. I'd gotten hurt in the gym, and I couldn't really do much of anything other than dry fire. And um, I picked up an airsoft airsoft gun, and I spent an entire winter just every night practicing. And the next season, I saw tremendous gains. I was seeing so much more. It, it actually took a while to kind of catch up to what my eyes had had uh, kind of what I trained my eyes to be able to do, and um, a lot of people ask me about master class or GM, and I would tell you that that is 
one of the biggest secrets to, you know, quickest cheats, if you will, to getting there. I mean, live fire is big, but uh, if you can if you can get the, the, the dry fire reps in, uh, airsoft makes it so much more fun. You're actually knocking something down. You know, things are happening, and uh, it it for me is a, a lot less boring, and, and and that's something I put in you know a ton of time with, and then. From the fitness perspective, you know, I, I try and incorporate it in the drills that I run. You know, especially whenever I'm leading up to matches that you may have a, a ton of physicality. I'll I'll add, um, you know, kind of a CrossFit element to you know coming into shooting positions versus just taking a couple of steps. I'll run 30 yards and, and, and come up to a shooting position, and I'll just basically, you know, kind of turn a 30 minute or hour hour and a half range session into, um, you know, what kind of mirrors a, a trip to the gym and, you know, get, you know, you really kill two birds with one stone or something like that. And I think that, you know, that, that helps in a number of ways. I mean, obviously it's good to be, it's good to stay in shape, but then, uh, you know, that certainly won't hurt you, uh, you know, in a big match as well. Definitely. Uh, just to dovetail into what uh, Chris was saying, with the airsoft, if you keep it at a realistic distance, uh, let's say my garage, I can shoot up to about eight, nine yards. The airsoft is accurate enough uh, to actually, you know, demand some, some good fundamentals where you have to, to shoot. I, I've made targets that are only, you know, an inch by an inch that I have to hit at seven yards. Now, that's as challenging a shot as you're going to take uh, in a lot of matches if you look at the perspective. Uh, we all had handguns. They, they make a ton of handguns that are, that are awesome for airsoft. But for me, what really helped out in 3-Gun last year, um, they started making gas blowback rifles. Nice. This really put it over the top. This is my KWA. Um with uh, you know my basic three gun system all set up on it, and I can shoot this in the garage. Obviously, I have to change this the zero pretty drastic on the scope, but I can I, it, it shoots you know real accurate. I, I can take it out in the yard and shoot out to 25 yards if I need to. But just shooting and moving, being able to be get you know demand the accuracy on a small target. Um, you're not going to get any recoil control out of the handgun or the rifle. Uh, don't bother with the shotguns. The shotguns for loading. Use your real, real, real gun when you're practicing. But if you, what I like to do is just shoot one shot on each target. So there's a knockdown target, and I'll drive the gun and shoot one shot because that way you're not worried about recoil control. Uh, if you were trying to, to do it, you know, a, a build drill and shoot six rounds, you're not going to gain see the gains with an airsoft gun. But you will see the gains if you take six targets and knock down six targets in a row like a plate rack. That's something that you're going to have to do all the fundamentals. You've got to get a good sight, picture sight alignment. You've got to prep the trigger, do everything right, especially if the targets are small. That's why I, I, I had asked my uh, uh, target maker, Bam Airsoft, to make a what I call their Grand Master Series and make a real small play rack because that was what was challenging to me and really took my handgun shooting and my rifle shooting uh, to another level. Awesome. I'm, I'm really glad you touched on that because I'm a big proponent for airsoft practice. So... I can definitely see the benefits there, and you touched on a few different ideas that I hadn't even really thought of myself. One and of the things that uh, one of the things that you I'll caution you with with airsoft guns, and, and Keith mentioned that um, the fact that they don't really have the recoil and, and doing things like build drills or going full auto or dry fire does the same thing. You don't you don't have recoil, and you you can put yourself in a position to ingrain bad habits by trying to do something you can't do with your real gun. Um, that's a perfect example of what I try and do as well. I try and shoot mostly steel. I don't shoot more than one shot on paper. I don't sit there and drill four or five rounds in one target because that's not what happens with my real gun. Everything up until the point where you pull the trigger is the same, but after that it's not, and so you know you want to kind of keep that element out of your practice. I've got the exact same rifle Keith has. My pistol, which is right over here, is a clone of my STI. Uh, this is a Tokyo Marui. Uh, 5.1, which Keith, I bet you probably have one of these too. I've got uh, the same, same exact one. Yeah, I mean, this is this is really kind of the go-to airsoft guy pistol. Uh, I've got a couple of these. I've, I I can't even tell you how many rounds I put through them, but they are exactly the same. They operate. All the controls are the same. The trigger is about two and a half pounds. It's really, really, really similar to my competition gun. Fits in the same holster. Um, these things are great. They're about two hundred dollars now, but um, I think you get them for a little bit, a little bit less now. I think they're coming down a little bit. And for the viewers who aren't really familiar with that, a lot of those higher quality airsoft weapons are coming out of Japan. So, yeah. I think the price is dictated by the the availability. That's what I've noticed. Like I've I bought one of these for as cheap as one hundred and fifty dollars, 
and I've seen them online for as much as 180, 100, 190 dollars. So you guys got a website? That, that um, you, know you know, they're all over the place. Um, it's, Keith mentioned Bam Airsoft. Uh, for targets, they are the best. They have tons of very good airsoft resources. In fact, when I got into the, um, the airsoft stuff, when I was just getting into competition shooting, I spoke with those guys pretty extensively. They steered me in the direction of that gun, and uh, their targets are great. Um, there are, you know, if you Google um, airsoft pistols, you'll find, you know, a number of companies online that I think uh, Red Wolf and uh, Evic and um, Atlanta Airsoft, there are a number of them that, that generally keep that pistol. Uh, I really like the Tokyo Marui. There's another version of this rifle. This has a plastic slide or of this pistol. It has a plastic slide, uh, which a lot of people would think is bad. There are some versions that have metal slides, but I like this slide because it cycles faster, and so it more closely resembles a real gun. I, I've had the metal slide version and tried it, and it just it's really slow. It doesn't feel like the same thing. It's, it's a little further away from what we're normally shooting. So. You want to throw that contest announcement out real quick, Anthony? I don't mean to interrupt these guys, but I know that's kind of a, a big part of the show. We've already got some people trying to get in on the giveaway. So. All right, so giveaway. the giveaway, guys. Well, I can. Yeah. <laughs> the giveaway, again, is going to be from the folks at Atlanta Arms and Ammo. Once again, they've been gracious enough to add a $50 gift card to the website. You guys can pick up ammo, shirts, hats, gear from them. AtlantaArmsAndAmmo.com. You're going to be winning 50 bucks from them. Also, TacticalLife.net. You're going to be able to go on that website and select uh, a shirt. Um, I believe any short sleeve shirt on their website. Um, you'll have that. And they're also going to throw in a decal uh, sticker. It usually has an AR-15 or a Glock or an STI somewhere on that sticker. They're going to throw that in there. I also have a bottle of RAN CLP. I'm going to be giving away this to the every, you know, one winner is going to win it all. I'm going to give away a bottle of that. And also I have a discount code for you guys who are looking to get this stuff and you guys uh, happen not to win this time. Um, if you enter the discount code, if you go to RANCLP.com, you enter the discount code TAC15 and you get 15% off a bottle. Um, and that's TAC15 and you get 15% off. And this stuff, it's only two ounce bottle, but this is plenty. This this will last you forever. This stuff is the good stuff. All right. So that's what we're winning. In order to enter the giveaway, just say in the chat box, "Enter me in the giveaway," and at the end of the show, we will announce it on the Shooters Mindset Facebook page. Uh, winner will be selected through Random.org. Don't so, forget the free hats from your friends at Vertex. That's right. Oh, there you go. Chris Anderson has. Nothing better are, than a are you doing? Are you doing one or two Vertex? I've got hats two. Here? I've got two. So you guys are also going to get a Vertex hat, courtesy. I mean, I think it has his DNA on that, so you might become a, <laughs> a, a Grand Master overnight wearing that thing. Uh, I think this one is actually, uh, actually was Chris's before. Uh, it got broken <laughs> off his head. Double and put on. That's the key to winning 50 grand. <laughs> Apparently. G getting your hat from Chris. So, That's it. All right, I you got any live questions, Steve, or you want to just jump into the next talking point? Yeah, we had actually a few questions come in. Um, I'm going to scroll back here a little bit. I know that one of the questions was based on, uh, and this comes from uh, Mr. Jesse Tischauser. Oh, no. I've heard of that guy. Yeah, I, I've heard something about <laughs> I think you should him. block him right now. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the guy, but I heard he shoots... BB guns or something, but he was asking how long it took for uh, Chris to clean his bunker to get ready for the show there. It took weeks. It took weeks. Uh, <laughs> Jesse has uh, been over here quite a few times, and we've had quite a few airsoft tournaments in this uh, this facility. So, you know, we talked about the BAM targets. I'll, I'll scroll around here so you guys can see kind of what I have set up. This is kind of my dry fire rig. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a pretty big shop space, and I've got about a 20 by 30 practice area that I've kind of pulled some backgrounds out and, and I can use my targets and, and, and work on stuff out here. So I decided to broadcast from here so you guys could kind of see what I kind of work with. The nice thing about Airsoft is you don't need this much space, but it's certainly nice when you have it. Definitely. Wow, that, Chris, that's that's very impressive. I mean, I don't have half that space. I, I think you'd be much better if that, with that much room to practice. Yeah, there's... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's uh, there are usually cars in here, but uh, you know when there aren't, it gives me quite a bit of space. And so we we Jesse's been over here quite a few times. We we work with this whenever we have the opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna send this one over to uh, Mr. Garcia from Steve McGinley. He was wanting to know how you can balance. You know how do you, how do you go about balancing work, your travel to the matches, your training, your family time? It's got to be pretty consuming. Yeah, I bribed the kids, and I just got back actually from two weeks. Uh, the first week was at Disney World. The second week was a Disney Cruise, right? So basically, try to my wife tried to spend all the fifty thousand that I won, um, and it was it was essentially a payoff for, for them to say, you know, I got to go out of town eight times, nine times this year, and they're totally understanding. They know when I go practice. They know when I go in the garage. I need an hour or so, you know, every other night, and they're very understanding. I have two young daughters, and uh, you know, I, I help coach softball for my oldest, and, and you know, try and try and be a good husband and, and dad. But it is tough. Uh, work uh, doesn't uh, support this habit at all, so I have to you know take time off work to go and and, and travel to the matches. So I do like the Three Gun Nation series for that because it does cut down the uh, amount of time you got to be away. But uh, it, it is tough. It, it, you really have to love it. And I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't do it in, in, if I didn't have the passion for it. Um, I truly enjoy uh, competing. Uh, the people are, are some of the nicest people, some of the best friends I've ever made, uh, have been involved with shooting. And uh, it's, uh, it's worthwhile to me to take the time to do it. Definitely. Uh, we, we experience the same thing, uh, Steve. Just some of the best people are are in the shooting sports and you get along with them the best so that's definitely a good point I got a few more or you can move forward with yours uh, you can give us you can give us one more all right um I had 87 bill dog and I went and checked out his channel I'm gonna actually start doing that a little more checking out these guys channels so I can tell if they're actually uh, trying to give legit questions or not and of course this is a not so legit question but I thought it was kind of funny 87 Bill Dog wants to know Keith why don't you cash all those checks in your garage <laughs> just like Happy Gilmore said the, uh, the bank don't take them you know it's just uh, it's just just eye candy you know but uh, it is kind of fun to have people come over who uh, don't know that I shoot competition stuff and they walk in the garage and they look up and, and the UPS guy does it and the FedEx guy and they all look up and they're like Wow, you know, they, they they finally figure out that this is legitimate sport, and uh, made nearly a hundred thousand uh, dollars just in three gun nation winnings. So to nice. me, it's uh, not only fun, but you know, you can make a little money on the side. Right. Real quick, I'll get one more. And um, Steve McGinley again was curious to know. He didn't see the uh, the little grandmaster small plate rack on the website is that something you had custom made and is not available to the public or can they re can they request to get that mini plate rack I, I did uh, I did have it custom made I, I, I had it custom made but I'm sure if you send him an email or something is he is he breaking up a little bit yeah he's Ramsey? freezing a little bit yeah. he may have a connection issue I'm sure he'll be back in a moment yeah, so we'll touch on that. We'll touch on that when Keith gets the connection sorted out. Um, I'll probably get kicked out and I'll probably rejoin. Um, so we'll start off to a question going over to Chris and something that I actually noticed today. There was a uh, picture posted up on Facebook, but the Rainier Arms three gun rifle. Yes, sir. Um, talk talk about that because that's a sweet looking uh, rifle, no doubt. And yeah, I'm this sure is. Uh... Rainier has kind of jumped into the three-gun game with this rifle. This is their Redline three-gun rifle. Um, it's got kind of a proprietary match billet receiver set, which has actually got some pretty neat features. This gun actually comes with um, ambi safeties. It's got a bolt release on the trigger side, which is very nice. Um, Lancer handguard, their Ultimash barrel, which is extremely accurate, comes with a one mi minute of angle guarantee. Uh, tons of features. This is a really, really strong entry into the competition market. Rainier is obviously known for high quality product, and, and when they start building competition stuff, that's something I think to be taken seriously. This is one of the better guns I've ever shot. It it, uh, it handles beautifully. It's it's just a, a really nice piece. The quality is just amazing. Yeah, I just put a photo of this up on Facebook today and I've already gotten a ton of emails about it. I love the yeah. rail on that. Yeah, yeah this uh, this handguard is is made by Lancer for Rainier and uh, super light, 
I've, I've run a number of different. I was nervous about that. That's one of the things. Uh, handguards are kind of a personal thing, and uh, when I got it, I was immediately fell in love with it. It handles great, and it was much lighter than the last rifle, which means the gun points a lot better. Uh, very, very slick. And that comes out the box looking like that? I mean, of course, the scope's not going to be on it, but... Yeah, um, I've got my own uh, stock on it, but largely this gun looks just like this out of the box. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. You know what's the ballpark price on that? So we can they can go over and check it out? I think it's about $1,800. Um, oh, that's they've not been, bad. Yeah, they've just, been, they've just put them up on the website, actually, within the past few weeks. So go to rainierarms.com, check it out. They've got a ton of other fee offerings as well. Uh, this this rifle's an 18-inch barrel. That's what I run. They also offer it in a 16-inch as well. Uh, very, very nice piece. Very nice. That's a sweet... That's going to be a game-changer for three-gun guys are trying to get a rifle to enter with. Um, Keith, I don't know. I think did Keith got back? his connection. Did you, did you get me yeah. back on? Am yeah, you look, like you, you look like you're back on there. And uh, I don't know if you want to finish off that question that we had for him. Which one was it? Oh, the... So the Bayam Airsoft stuff, you know, send Phil, uh, you know, an email through the website. Ask him, you know, if you don't have a lot of room, if you got seven or eight yards, and that's all you got to work with in your garage for running airsoft, you know, you really want the small one. If you got a huge, uh, you know, mansion like Chris Anderson, then you know, you've got plenty of room. <laughs> Just get the regular one and set it out at 15 or 20 yards. Awesome. My wife yeah. likes to point out that this space is actually bigger than our house, so uh, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> well done. Right. You got any more, or we want to move on to the next talking point? Because I have one. Uh, I have one here for Keith. <clears throat> Go ahead. All right. So this one's for Keith. Uh, what do you have to do to remain the Three Gun Nation champion? Now you know on, you're on top of the world, so everybody wants to knock the king off the throne, especially Jesse Tishhauser and uh, the guys over at Stag. So what do you do to remain? Do you just train harder, or you just say, you know, what it happens, happens? Well, you know, when it comes down to the shoot-off, um, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to train for it because the shooting isn't hard. Um, I actually, the range facility I train at, I don't have the ability to shoot a play rack with, with my rifle, so I have to use a 22 conversion. Um, I don't ever get to shoot, like, you know, rifle, pistol, shotgun in a row. I don't set it all up. I, I practice the different elements of it, and the shooting is not that tough. What it comes down to is uh, mental toughness, um, the date of the match. You know, when you show up, uh, if you think you can win and you go out there and perform, then you'll have a, a good shot at it. I think there's a lot of guys who, uh, you know, our, sh our sport for the most part is kind of a, uh, a one-man show. You know, you're, you're there competing against yourself in the timer. There's usually, you know, your squad mates watching, etc. For the Three Gun Nation shoot-off, uh, they, they trucked in 1,500 people last year. They put up a bunch of lights, you know, had cameras and mics on everybody, and uh, that raises the game a bit. And I, the way I see it, there's there's really three types of people. Uh, when once we get to the shoot off, uh, the, the first type they uh, get a little overwhelmed by all of the glitz and everything and the pressure because there's people watching now. There's there's TV cameras on you and they, you can't get away from it, and their their performance kind of goes down. Then there's the guys who've been doing it forever, uh, guys like Jerry and Mike Boyd, who you know you would never get them nervous in a million years. So they just perform the way they normally perform. And then there's guys who actually get some adrenaline from the whole thing, and it improves their performance. And I think I'm in, the, in that classification. And for me to get out there, I know I can win. I've won you know, four or five of these shoot-offs now, including the big one. So I'm very confident in my ability to go out there and perform. Um, and I think that aspect of it will definitely help me again this year. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going out and, and winning again. Uh, it's, you know, it's... Yeah, it's $50,000 50, doesn't hurt to, no, to get it. it doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt at all. You know, we, we, we did a shoot-off at the la end of the last match, the Three Gun Nation Pro Series. We shot, basically the top ten shot the shoot-off stage. But you shot it by yourself against the clock. And uh, I was very happy to win that stage and, uh, you know, by a pretty good margin. So, I mean, like I said, the, the shooting isn't hard. It comes down to when people are watching and money's on the line um, and there's another guy shooting next to you, uh, do you block it all out and perform well? Do you take it all in and perform better? Yeah. Or do you kind of shrink away from it and lose? You know, that's, that's the, you know, the, only, the only 
way you can go. You know, you can either go up or down. And uh, hopefully in the end, uh, you'll, you'll see uh, a repeat this year. What do you think, Chris? I don't know. I, I, I'm liking that Anderson guy. <laughs> good. It's good to be confident. And what are you doing? What are you What are you doing to, you know, try to prepare and beat Keith? I mean, are you just taking a, are you drink drinking a twelve pack every day, or are you, you know, actually, doing a Keith few more sit-ups? Uh, you know, I was in the shoot off last year as well, or last season as well, and uh, I was slated against Wes Chandler, who's a good buddy of mine and a great shooter. And uh, had I not gotten taken out by West, Keith would have been the guy I faced. And uh, you know, it's it's exactly what Keith said. I you know I was watching you guys' uh, chat with Ben Stoger and. He talked about as you know how he progressed and and um, you know you, you have these shooters that you look up to and then you start competing with and you know I think there becomes a point where if you want to be competitive at a certain level you are no longer paying any attention to who's on the other side of the table it's it's about what you can do and um, you know you're just competing against yourself and you know I all all, all competition is like that but I think the shooting sports in particular you know. I, you, you, you aren't paying attention to anything except what you're capable of. And if you're operating at the highest level, um, you know, you're just basically not making mistakes. You're, you're executing to 100% of your ability, and if that's enough, then, you know, great. You're, you're on, to the, on to the next step. And, um, you know, I think if you start to let other thoughts, other than anything other than that, interfere, then you've already lost. I mean, especially in that format, because it is truly anybody's game. Everybody there has the capability to beat everybody else there given, you know, their best performance. And so it's, uh, you know, you just can't make mistakes. I had a quick question I wanted to throw in. Um, you know, I have people ask me all the time. I shoot IDPA more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm a mid-level shooter, so I'm not at the level you guys are at, not even close. But I still get enough Fine. questions to make this, you know, a valid uh, request. People ask all the time, you know, I can't get out to train with, you know, a good instructor, this, that, and the other. Uh, and we'll we'll start off with Keith on this one. What what kind of recommendations would you make? Books, videos, any of that kind of thing. Is there anything out there that you're aware of that would help somebody who really wants to learn about three gun but doesn't have access to a good coach? You know, uh, the books are mainly focused on the handgun aspect of it. Ben's book is really good. You know, all, all, all the stuff he's put together, his websites. You know, I think honestly the best thing, if you can't get to a class, there's there's some videos and stuff. Um, Novasky has some stuff out. But just go on YouTube and, and seeing all the stuff that's available there kind of gives you an idea, good and bad. You know, I mean, you can look at a video that I make about reloading and, and pick something up. And then you can, you can uh, turn around and go on Jesse Tischauer's site and figure out, okay, I don't want to do that. So it's you know it's good and bad, it's, uh, but the, YouTube is a tremendous resource. I mean, go on Eno's forum. If you have questions, go in there and ask questions, or troll the site and just collect info. Um, there are a number of excellent instructors who you know do traveling road shows may come near your area. Um, you know, here's the thing about videos and, and reading and YouTube. It it doesn't change the fact that if you're doing something drastically wrong and no one's watching you to correct you, uh, it's tough to, to, to progress. Um, if you fundamentally learn how to do a draw stroke correct, you can then practice like crazy because you have the right technique. And, and once you learn the information, I think we are our own best teachers because you can internalize the right information and then repeat it. And that's what you have to do, like I said, five to 10,000 times to really get something down. But if you're practicing something that's wrong, or something that's slow, something that's inefficient, um, you're just going to get, you know, a little bit better at doing something wrong. You're not going to really improve mm -hmm. your skill level. So I would say if you have the opportunity to even, you know, glom onto somebody. When I go to the matches, you know, we, we have a lot of downtime. And I've, uh, on occasions, uh, many occasions, I, I've been happy to go off the side of the range and do a little uh, tutorial on how to load the shotgun or just, you know, at a pistol match, hey, this is how I draw. This is my philosophy behind loading and shooting on the move. And give guys some pointers because, you know, I, I don't think there's really any secrets uh, when it comes to this stuff. It comes down to, you know, getting the right, inf right information. I don't mind giving people all the information about how I load the gun or my strategy and stuff. And then I tell them at the end of the class or the end of the, the, the talk, hey, go practice more than I do, and then you'll be. Mm -hmm. 
So that's my challenge to you. Practice more than I do. I'll, I'll give you the info. Come ask me at a match. I'll show you how I load the gun. I'll show you how I draw the pistol. I'll show you how I hold the rifle. Um, just so you get the idea what it's supposed to be like because the video is, you know, it's two-dimensional. You, you don't get uh, the feedback and somebody's not watching you. So it's, it's, it, that's the only drawback. But there is a ton of good info out there. And I could recommend, you know, Ben's uh, book, uh, Brian Enos's book. Uh, you know, it reads like stereo instructions for the first four or five times, but once it clicks and you understand what he's saying, and you go out and you shoot and you feel the gun lift and you saw the sights move and you go, wow, that's what he was talking about. Now I've seen it once, I want to see it again, and that's the kind of stuff that helps you improve. I think the local matches are going to be your biggest resource as a new shooter in terms of if you, especially if you've got somebody who's at a pretty high level at a local club that can give you, you know, keep you in check. Like he said, I think that the biggest pitfall with this sport because it is so complex is that you can get off track so easily. You know, you have you have that with golf. You get a hitch in your swing and you keep reinforcing that bad habit, and it gets it gets ingrained and it never goes away. And you play that slice for the rest of your life. Uh, three gun is like that, except you've got a hundred other things you can have going wrong as well, and if you don't have somebody to check that down, I mean, ideally instruction, you know, from a, a, a good trainer is the best way to go, but, um, you know, if you can get somebody that you can see knows what they're doing, or, you know, video is great. I mean, you can, you, you get to a point where, you know, initially, I, I'm not a big fan of first-person video, but if you can get video of yourself that matches that you can post up on forums for people to critique, you know, people that you trust to critique, um, you know, that'll help a ton, and then you're going to get to the point where you understand what what doing something wrong looks like, and you can actually use that video yourself and be, be uh, you, you know, your own instructor as well. I, I still use video a ton. I, I very much like to see, you know, every stage I shoot when I have the opportunity because I pick up on things all the time that I want to change or, you know, improve or any number of things. That's yeah, something one, that, uh, one, I'm sorry, go ahead, Keith. Uh, just one thing I can add to that. When you're filming your, your stage and you're filming your own performance, that's a great way to, uh, to, to really see how you look in the stage. Take the opportunity, if you can get their permission, to film somebody who's shooting in your squad who's better than you right. and whose times are consistently better. Then compare your ability to move through the stage because a lot of this stuff is the efficiency that you have in movement. And that's not a lot of the, the videos that we have out there and the, the, the web forms don't really encapsulate what it is to be smooth and move uh, dynamically and then take the, up, take the time to stop, shoot what you got to shoot, and then move on and the techniques to do that. There's, there's a little bit here and there. Uh, Burkett does a pretty good job in his video series of, of talking about entering boxes and etc. Uh, the old Jerry Barnhart stuff back in the day, the Burner series, um, it's all good stuff if you can find it. Um, he's got some really good stuff about how to enter boxes and exit. Now we don't do boxes so much. We, you know, the philosophy changed, and now it's ports and, and, and areas and doorways. A little bit different to set up in those things. And that's where people lose time in pistol matches, is their ability to move from point A to B to C to D efficiently. And then, you know, you don't have to be the fastest guy in the world. You know, Rob Latham says, hey, just get there, be the first one shooting, not, not the first one there stumbling around trying to get your balance because you're so fast, and then you run past the position. Just be fat, you know, be smooth and deliberate. Get there and be shooting before the next guy. And that way you'll improve your performance. But look at your ability to do break down a stage and shoot it compared to somebody else who's who's shooting the same stages. Yeah, and that's touching on something that uh, we have a viewer in the room right now, Guns and Hoses 489, and I was having a conversation with him the other night about trying to get squatted up with guys that are consistently at least a level or two levels ahead of you so you can try and pick up some tips and tricks don't just you know always try to shoot with your best buds and then you're gonna learn some stuff here and there but if you can get with some guys that are a little bit better you're gonna pick up things a bit quicker yeah and I, I can it, touch up on that because like I said I, I, I told Chris in a pre-chat here I shot my first like grand stage pistol match it was the steel world challenge and I saw you know the Max Michelle's the Casey Escubios all these guys and I had a, the worst match of my life out there and then I, and I was shooting with uh, Comtech. I was shooting with Randy, uh, Randy Rogers, and uh, uh, Gordon Carell. I believe that's the last name. And when it was all said and done, because we were shooting in the same division and everything like that, when it was all said and done, he pulled me to the side and he told me exactly what I was doing wrong. And that that lesson in itself, it was probably a, you know 15 minute lesson. 
we shot like 10, 12 rounds. And that lesson in itself made that trip worth it, even though it was a disaster. Um, it was kind of over before it started, but in the end there, it kind of it made it all worth it, and I walked away with a valuable lesson. And uh, so that's very important. So if you guys see these guys uh, shooting a three-gun nation match or you know any three-gun match in the area, just stop by, spectate. Maybe you can learn a couple things. Maybe they'll, like Keith said, they'll pull you aside and show you how he draws and how he does things. So that's a priceless lesson um, there. Um, and then I think we're going to, I'm just going to announce that giveaway for more people who have joined us. Um, I'm going to do, again, $50 gift card to Atlanta Arms and Ammo, my favorite ammunition manufacturer by far. Atlanta Arms and Ammo, you get $50 gift card to there. Tacticallife.net is going to be supplying you with a t-shirt um, and a decal for the car. If you don't want to get honked at anymore, you put a Tactical Life AR sticker on the back of your car, and that usually prevents honking. I, I know it's worked for me. Um, and we got Rand CLP um, giving away this bottle. It's a two-ounce bottle. Uh, cleaner, lubricant, protectant for your firearms. It makes cleaning up your firearms a lot easier. Um, it's some good stuff, so you can get uh, RandCLP.com. Um, you get a bottle of this. Um, also, if you guys didn't win that bottle, you guys can go over to the website and enter discount code TAC15. That's T-A-C-15. You get 15% off a bottle. In order to enter the giveaway, just type in enter me in the giveaway in the chat box. We'll select the winner randomly and announce it on our Facebook page at the Shooter's Mindset on Facebook. So there you have it. And if we don't have any questions, Steve, we'll probably move on. Um, I had this question because I was talking to a buddy of mine on the team. He's building his three-gun rifle from the ground up. And we were talking about scopes. And he's like, well, what should I go with, a 1x4 or a 1x6? And is there is one of those two you guys prefer? Or do they kind of both have their own individual role? And you guys probably own both of them. But what do you guys recommend there? Keith and I run the same optic. We both run the Swarovski 1x6 uh, the, uh, with the BRT reticle, which is kind of the prevalent uh, scope in the 3 Nation Pro Series and honestly probably the best optic for the game. But, you know, they're very expensive. So um, one question you have to ask, your, the, the, the big question is what can you afford? Um, there's a tremendous variance in price. I mean, there are some good scopes out there for, you know, $500 that if you're shooting local matches that are going to be a 1x4, that are you know going to probably be just fine for your for your needs, but um, you know if you're looking to you know stretch it out to 600 yards, um, you know shoot some of the larger three gun matches, get more and more competitive, then you have to kind of you know start taking a look at, at what the one by sixes have to offer. Um, you know there's there's a lot to be said for that extra two power of, of zoom for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with Chris. I think uh, you know I'm not sure how long Chris has been shooting, but when I started you. There was no one by six or one by eight. You had uh, one one point two five to four, one point five to, to five, etc. To me, the biggest advantage was when they came out with a true one power. I mean, that to me, like shooting a red dot, and face it, we, most of the stuff we do is is fifty yards and in. So having that true one one power uh, setting with a nice bright dot was something that was invaluable. Now, you know, the Z6i just steps that up a whole nother level. Uh, it's a great scope. It has a reticle in there that you can program in your velocity and your bullet. You know, basically all of your stuff that you're doing in your gun, you plug it into the computer program and it tells you where you're going to hit on its red on the reticle. It's it's something that's uh, really really convenient to have, and uh, I think it's a it was a game changer when it came out, and you'll see a, a lot of guys gravitated towards it as a result. Yeah, it's basically the optic that everybody else compares themselves to. So I mean, it's it's going to be it's leading the game, and it has been for a long time, and probably will continue to do so. But, uh, you know, we both... I've had this... I've been running this scope for about two years. I actually started out shooting irons uh, in three-gun, and um, six-power was kind of a, a pretty big change for me. It's uh, it's fun to have, that's for sure. So you guys recommend going with the one by 6 That's interesting. Ideally, if it's within your price range to have that... Definitely get a true one power scope. Make sure, you know, there are a lot of offerings out there that are one and a quarter, you know, something in that neighborhood. True one power is, is very important for what we do. Like he said, true one X is, is, you know, where the speed comes from, for sure. And then field of view is very important. That's one of the things that's very good about the Swarovski optic is it has a tremendous 
uh, field of view, and then the, the clarity of the glass is just uh, second to none. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that Swarovski is known for their crystal in general. Um, they sell a lot of really high-end crystals, so that's the, gla the glass for their optics is just impeccable. Yeah, what you see through the scope is better than real life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, can you guys recommend a scope for under a thousand bucks, one by six? My, uh, co my copyright agreement or uh, sponsorship <laughs> agreement precludes me from doing so. All right, so Chris, can you answer it? I actually have the same sponsorship agreement, so I'm not sure that I I'm not sure that there is a one by six under a thousand dollars. So there you go. Okay, that answers that because um, there's some nice airsoft scopes you can get into for, for <laughs> yeah. under under a hundred dollars if you just want right. to make it look good. Definitely. But seriously, uh, guys, I believe a, a a true one by four is, is you're better off going with something that you can find in your price range than than going to like a one and a half to six or a one and a half to eight something. That true one power is huge. Um, you can make do with a four power if, you, if your budget won't uh, allow you to go up to six. There's some good stuff out there. Um, I, I can't name names, but I, if you look, you'll, you'll see some good stuff out there. And, uh, you know, the price is, is, is pretty reasonable. Um, but once you uh, make a commitment to really getting serious in the sport, you know, and invest in, a, in a, a real good quality scope, and you won't go wrong. You know, it may be more expensive than your rifle, but I'll tell you what, when... Uh, when you're shooting at 500 and uh, the wind's blowing, and you go down there and hit, you know, the first shot hit, and, and you're moving out of the position, uh, it makes it uh, very worthwhile. We got a bunch of viewer questions we could run through real quick if you want, Anthony. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys for, because with having two guys on, this is the first time we've done this. Let's try to run through these quick. Maybe a 20 second answer. XK Commander was asking about a preferred barrel length for your comp rifle. So uh, let's go with Chris. I think we both actually run 18-inch barrels. Uh, there's uh, the, with the dawn of the Pro Series matches that Three Gun Nation hosts, uh, a lot of guys are going to some shorter stuff. But uh, I've run an 18-inch barrel for the past two seasons, and it served me really well um, on everything from really close stuff all the way out to the 600-yard shots. All right. Um, all right. So here, here's here's the big difference, right? So. This is the gun I run. I've been running for the last three years. It's a 18-inch uh, heavy barrel from JP. Um, nice worn uh, ramp mount on there for my Z6i. I got some Duke Defense offset sights on there uh, with a Timoney trigger with uh, an A stock. I added on a butt plate on the end. It's just a, it's a, a shotgun butt plate because I wanted the head position to be right. Because if you get behind your scope and you see any clouding in there, you want to make it a little bit longer. But this gun is heavy. It's very heavy now. I've got uh, hear all this talk about the light rifle. Now this thing I can hold up with one finger. It's uh, a 16-inch JP with uh, you know no no venting in there for cooling. Uh, got a different you know uh, Magpul stock on here and a small aim point uh, optic on here. Which now this one uh, for picking it up and running around with it in a 50-yard end course uh, is great. But uh, if I got to reach out and uh, hit anything at distance, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up my 18-inch gun. Julia Michelle wants to know if Chris fed the dog. If I fed the dog? Yeah. I think he's running loose in the neighborhood somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, I had another good question here about local matches. Do you guys shoot any local matches outside of Three Gun Nation? Less and less, um, you know, with the travel, it, you, you kind of have to pick your battles, and, um, you know, I really very much enjoy the local matches, but it's, it's difficult, you know, uh, you, you need a certain amount of training, and, you know, you've got to kind of stay focused on what you want to accomplish, and, and it doesn't always in, involve, you know, shooting local matches as much as I'd like. Uh, when I first started, um, Jesse Tischauser and I both kind of started at the same time, and we're pretty close to each other in terms of uh, uh, geography, and, and so he and I traveled to every local match we could attend for almost two years, and uh, you know that I think is pretty attributable to, we can attribute a lot of our getting better to shooting so much and kind of pushing each other, but as we kind of progressed and got to a, a higher level and started traveling to larger matches more regularly, uh, it's difficult to, to get to very many local matches. I've, I, I shot one last week, and I'm going to shoot another one this weekend. But those are the first two that I've shot in probably the past three months. All right, you got one more? 
Yeah, we've got a couple more here real quick. Um, a lot of pro shooters. This is coming from Poo Piggle, which is a poop. <laughs> no, poop giggle. Even better. Pretty good screen name there. They wanted to know about pro shooters advocating like a self-image, mental toughness type training method. So, do you guys have you ever used a sports psychologist or anything like that? There is a book that I really like uh, called Mind Gym that um, I, got, I heard about from Mike Seeklander. I think Mike is one of the more cerebral uh, pros out there. You know, he comes from Pistol, but he's a big-time perfectionist. He was actually the first class I ever took when I got into Pistol, and uh, Mike's kind of local to me. And uh, I am huge. You know, never visited a sports psychologist, but I feel like that's uh, you know kind of right along the lines of what we've been talking about. We keep uh, discuss mindset with the shoot-off mentality. I mean, that's all about self-image and about visualization and, and execution. And I mean, that's you, know, you get to the higher levels and you're looking for perfection, and you don't get that without you know believing you can do it and and, and putting the work in and you know giving yourself all the tools to 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 succeed. And and one of the big ones is 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 mindset. Yep. Yeah, you the don't guys want it. <laughs> Lanny Basham has a, a series out, and uh, it's great. You know, it's 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 a different game he's talking about, but the same mental tools apply. Uh, I was very fortunate, and still am very fortunate, to be associated with uh, Ron Avery at the Practical Shooting Academy, and his mindset in terms of uh, how to deal with performance issues uh, and coming out and uh, really attacking the competition has been tremendous uh, value to me. He was standing on the sidelines during the uh, $50,000 shoot-off last year and, and coaching me through, and uh, Benny Cooley as well. You want to talk about a guy with a proper mindset who uh, you wouldn't want to tangle with in a match or outside a match. Um, Take a look at Benny's video series. He talks a lot about mindset, as well as the different uh, tactical operations and uh, just ability to shoot in the different positions and such. And you can pick up a ton of information on how to how to apply techniques, as well as what you should be thinking about when you're applying them. I think uh, it's far that far last one off. I think we're going to go to one more talking point. We're probably going to run, I know we run the show for an hour long, but since we got Chris and Keith both, we'll probably push the show to about an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes today, just so we can get everything uh, that we want to talk about out. So if you want to give one more live question, Steve, if you have any more. Um, I've got a f actually several, but I'll go with our buddy Jesse Tischauser. He wants to know if there's one tip you can get to help him not suck. <laughs> You know, we uh, we suffered through a whole season together last year, Jesse and I. <laughs> and uh, I would tell him just, uh, you know, showing up sober to the match. <laughs> Tremendous I'm, I'm not liking your answer already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we. I found out the hard way that that doesn't work very well. I don't know. No, no it going is not. Out, going out Friday night and then having a match Saturday morning is not, not a good deal. True. Yeah, when you just, travel to matches, I think that's one of the, the the traps that kind of people that haven't been to a lot of big matches can fall into. Is you know, have fun. You're out of town, and that's great, and you're with your friends. But you know, keep in mind that you're spending potentially as much as a thousand dollars to be there, and take it seriously. Um, you know, you can really hurt yourself. Jesse's <laughs> he's kidding. You know, that's not really a, a problem he has. But uh, you know, for a new guy, you know. Take it seriously, especially the first couple of trips out, and get a get a sense of uh, you know how the match is going to work and how you're going to perform, and don't don't limit yourself by staying out until two in the morning drinking beers before uh, you know it's time to time to perform. Oh, man. Yeah. That's and, something I can take and. <laughs> yeah, going you know going to your local matches and learning how to learning the mindset of a match, how a match progresses, how it feels. Um, you know, the first stage of a match is the only one where you should ever. Uh, you know, be at about 95% or, or maybe 93% somewhere there just to get things going, get your feet wet, get used to it at 8 in the morning when it's, you know, freezing outside and you got to get going. And then you got to jump into the rest of the match and go 100%. Learning those mental tools uh, at your local match uh, and then trying to take them and put them into play at a, at a, at a, at a big match, uh, it's, it is a hurdle. So to be a big match shooter, you do have to go shoot big matches. That would be my, my tip to anybody starting. You can go to all your local matches and become a big fish in a little pond, but until you can perform on a uh, national stage at uh, either a national championship or a sectional match or an area match against guys who um, it's really a coin flip who's going to win, 
uh, there's favorites, but you know there's there's at least you know five, six, seven, ten guys who can win the match, then you you really haven't done anything yet. Excellent. And I want to talk about because I know Team Vertex is fairly newly assembled. Um, uh, so all you guys, a few four guys who got together. So you want to talk about the new team, uh, Vertex shooting team, and the other guys you have associated with it. Yeah, the Vertex three gun team this year consists of myself and Keith, obviously, as well as uh, Rustin Burnsketter and Burton Thompson. Uh, Rustin's from uh, Missouri and Burton is from Oregon. Uh, we've got a really, I think, strong, kind of diverse group of guys that have, uh, I think, some pretty good talent all the way around. Uh, Vertex has made a big push into the shooting sports this year. They're a fairly new company. Uh, they offer tactical clothing and they're actually expanding into a lot of other areas this year. But uh, it's exciting stuff. They're a great brand. They have fantastic products. Everything, you know, you're always nervous about new sponsors, especially if you haven't handled their stuff. Uh, one of the things I was very pleased with whenever we were approached by these guys, we started getting their gear, was that, you know, this is something I would buy, uh, regardless of uh, any kind of sponsor arrangement. They, all of their clothing is, is very much top shelf. Uh, it's designed by law enforcement, military professionals for, you know, the rigors of, of their work and, and you know, the, the benefit of that is, you know, that you've got, a, uh, you've got stuff that does what it's designed to do versus just look cool. So uh, we've been, I think, very pleasantly surprised with everything they sent us. All right, guys, here's a, here's a promo code for you. So anybody who wants to uh, get some Vertex gear can get 40% off. You ready to copy this down? 40%, that's awesome. 40% off all items from their website wearvertex.com. It's uh, TMVTX40KG. See if we can get that on the... Uh... Perfect. It's uh, TMVTX40KG. I mean, that's, that's it. 40% is huge, and I actually can touch on, I have... Um, two pair uh, of Vertex uh, shorts, and I mean, especially I notice in the rain too, like the water almost bounces off of those. Like you know, at most most pants, you know, you kind of get soaked and it all seeps into the material. But I mean, they're definitely rugged uh, pants, and uh, my probably one of my top choices um, if I was going to wear, you know, putting my clothing on for sh for shooting a match is definitely Vertex. So you guys will be happy, especially with that 40% off. I mean, that's huge. So. Yeah, it takes, uh, you know, if you, you were thinking about trying it, I mean, it makes it really honestly cheaper than a lot of inferior products with the promo code. So definitely they've got uh, a bunch of new stuff coming out. All of their polos and pants are, are fantastic, but they've got a lot of other clothing products that are, you know, worth looking at also. And then watch for a lot of new stuff this year. They've got a lot of exciting new things coming down the pipe. Yeah, I can tell you, um, the, it, it's an offshoot of a, a uniform company, Flesheim, and it's uh, they make all the uh, a lot of the police uniforms you're going to see out there on the streets. And I've been wearing them for the last 20 years, and they're just incredibly durable. So when I found out that Vertex was part of that line and that company, that lineage, I was uh, real happy to be associated with them. Um, you know, they sent me like six pairs of pants, and I haven't even worn the first pair out yet. So if you're looking for a 38, 32, I might be able to hook you up with something. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> nice. So we're going to move into another question, and this was something that Chris and I and Anthony were discussing a little bit prior to the live show beginning, so I wanted to touch on this a bit. Um, we get some questions, Anthony and I. We've been pretty successful on pulling in some sponsorship. As far as you guys are concerned, uh, when we were talking earlier, again, Chris had said that you guys are pretty much have some mutual sponsors and then you also have some secondary individual sponsors. Did you want to touch on that a little bit, Chris? Yeah, we, um, you know, we all kind of came from uh, other sponsorships to sort of unify under uh, the Vertex umbrella, but uh, you know, each of us kind of brought different things to the table. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, being sort of self-contained, everybody had kind of their own individual sponsors as well. Um, you know, as, as far as a team goes, is your question relating to, you know, how that works or? Just more or less um, basically how it works and, you know, your thoughts on the whole subject, you know, in general. Um, you know, I think 
as far as sponsorship goes, I mean, we have, uh, I have some of the greatest sponsors in the world. I mean, I'm very pleased to represent these companies. Um, you know, they've been very good to me, and they make this sport a lot easier. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't run the gear if I didn't, didn't like it. You know, we all kind of came into this from a recreational perspective, and we chose what we liked. And, and uh, you know, you have the opportunity in a lot of cases to, you know, pass on things that may or may not suit, you know, may or may not help you with the game. And so I think that, you know, you have to look at what you want to get from sponsorship. Um, you know, I'm... And I think we all are pretty picky, you know, at this level. You want things that aren't going to hinder your ability to perform at your best. Um, you know, we make sponsorship decisions based on a number of factors, but for me, the biggest one is, is uh, you know, is it going to suit, you know, my game and how I, how I shoot. But uh, as far as, you know, choosing sponsors or pursuing them, you know, it's, it, it really comes down to what you want from this sport, um, you know, or, you know, whether it be three-gun or pistol or anything else. Uh, you know, you, it can become work. You know, you are a marketing representative. You are, you know, you need to look at it from that perspective. Um, you know, if you're, these people are giving you gear or, or anything else for that matter, you know, you need to, to be uh, the person they expect you to be or the person you should be. Um, you know, from a marketing perspective, you need to, you know, uh, be professional at all times and, and do your best to represent the brands that, that, that help you. And, and uh, you know, we all... You know, kind of collectively bring that to the table for different sponsors. You know, we all um, like I said shoot for, do shoot for Vertex, but we, you know, we kind of bring all of our uh, our own individual sponsors, uh, you know, to the table as well. So, so with the individual sponsorship and with the team sponsorship, I know that we had spoke a little bit earlier about that. Um, you guys, I'm assuming, have different specialties. You don't always shoot three gun, and in some cases, one sponsor may be more appropriate for one team member versus the other. Right. You know, I I, sh I came from well, Keith did as well, but I, I was shooting a lot more pistol, and and still occasionally do do that. Um, you know, I do a lot of the outlaw matches as well, and and and, and really enjoy some of the long range stuff. You know, we've all kind of got things that we gravitate towards. I think. He's a pro pro match specialist. I mean, he's he's uh, really one of the best there is at at, at what we do on TV, and and uh, you know he gravitates that direction. And uh, you know I love those matches too. But you know I'm two weeks I'm going to Rocky Mountain, shoot New Mexico at 7,000 feet, and run around like a madman for you know three days, and, and I really enjoy that as well. So uh, we all have kind of uh, you know different skill sets, and I think that's what makes our team so great is that we've got four guys that. Regardless of the type of match that you um, you're at, you know they could contend to win it. One of us is going to be you know in the mix at all times. So I think we've got a really strong group of people. Yeah, I think uh, in the pro matches this year we've had you know two or three members of Team Vertex in the top ten right at the end, nice. going for the uh, going for the championship in each match. So that's good. You know, once you really get into three gun. I mean, I, I shot pistol only matches. You know, went to the nationals like four years in a row, and got some top 16 finishes in production and limited, and was you know pretty excited about that and enjoyed it. But when I picked up three gun, um, it just opened up a whole different level to me, and I I haven't been back to shoot much handgun only matches anymore. It, uh, it it's great, you know, when you when you pick up your handgun to go for go to a match. And you realize how much stuff you don't have to carry. It's pretty cool. I mean, I, I got to admit, I'm shooting a rifle-only championship this weekend. Uh, one of the few matches we have in California here, uh, and only having to drag along one gun is pretty cool. But even with all the hassle of traveling and uh, trying to manage all the different guns and ammo and, and all the specialties, three gun offers so much uh, in terms of entertainment value and the people associated with it. That uh, it's once I've gotten to that, I haven't looked back. All right, and we're at the hour mark of the show. Um, like I said, we're going to run it 30 minutes over um, today since we got Chris and Keith both. But I just want to mention that giveaway again, guys. Atlanta Arms and Ammo, AtlantaArmsAndAmmo.com. You get a $50 gift certificate to their website. You can pick up ammo, uh, hats, gear. TacticalLife.net is giving away a T-shirt and a decal for the car, um, the man cave, whatever you can, you can put it on. Um, and ran CLP. The website is ranbrands.com. I think I might have not announced that earlier. Ranbrands.com. I have a discount code for 15% off a bottle. Uh, that's TAC15. That's T A C 15. You enter that discount code, 15% off. I'm also going to be giving away this bottle as part of this giveaway. Um, just 
type enter me in the giveaway in the chat box. Winner will be announced on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, so you have to go there to find out who's the winner. We'll do that shortly after the show is over, and it'll be randomly selected through random.org. So let's see what we have here. Um, do you guys hold any uh, training? Would you, you know, do you, Keith, can you or, or Chris, would you guys fly to Florida or fly to Texas or wherever, you know, and do a class with a couple shooters, or is that something you're not getting into right now? I have done that in the past. Uh, again, working through the Practical Shooting Academy with Ron Avery and putting on classes uh, in that capacity. It just comes down to uh, logistics. Okay, um, having to travel out of state, uh, spend the time away from the family, is it uh, is it worthwhile? Do we have enough students to to, to fill a class? Um, is the pay commensurate with the, the skill level? And uh, are we going to all going to? Because I can put on a great class. I just need students to to get there and fill it up and. And I, I love teaching, and I have a, a bunch of different techniques for how to help people, uh, you know, figure stuff out and give them the information, and give them different ways to access it. Because I think one of the things that's wrong with watching videos all the time or reading a book, it's only one way to to get the information in your head. And uh, if you only have a one-way uh, sign going to the information, sometimes it gets lost. So what I like to do with my students is give them multiple ways to, to find the information by demonstrating things for them, watching them shoot, explain it to them, have them explain it back to me, all kinds of stuff so they can really become their own best teacher in the end. And, and you know, putting on classes, again, it's logistically, it's kind of a nightmare. If people are willing to uh, do the work, legwork, and, and organize a group and, um, you know, get that together, then, yeah, it, it makes it easy to, to fly in, put on the class, and, and, uh, and leave. Uh, that's kind of what you look for. You know, there's some guys that that's all they're doing, so they're they're willing to they are they have their own range. But uh, if you don't have your own range and you got to go places, it's kind of it's nice to have people on the ground where you're going to help organize stuff. And where where can these if they wanted to contact you regarding a class, I'm pretty sure you're going to need like eight to ten students, maybe more. Um, where can they get a hold of you? Just go on Facebook. Uh, you know, send me a message and uh, we can talk. Okay, and your Facebook's Keith Garcia, obviously. So if you guys are interested in the class, you guys can go send them a PM over there, and you guys can talk about it. Chris, you have anything over there? Um, next year at the Hornaday uh, Multigun Match in Grand Island, Nebraska, they are going to do some pro segments, or actually the, the day before the match, they're going to do a, a couple of pro clinics. And I'm going to put one on there. Uh, you know, I get asked that same thing. It, it's, it is very difficult. Uh, I do some work with local law enforcement here, you know, but that's also 10 minutes from my house. Uh, I work with some of the SWAT guys here in our local PD. But um, you know, it's something that you know I, I continue to look at, and I enjoy it as well. You know, I love teaching. I'm a pretty cerebral guy, and I, I love the science of it. But uh, you know, it's difficult. You know, there are only so many hours in the day, and and we all have jobs, and so. Uh, it's something I'm constantly looking at, so you know, it, 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 stay tuned, I guess. All right, I don't know, Steve, if you have any live questions, we can probably hit the live questions. I don't know if he's on there. Steve, you got it? I had uh, JWM66YT asking about, and I think this is a pretty basic question, but he says, do you need special equipment to shoot three gun? Is a CCW pistol, regular shotgun, and standard AR enough? You know what? The, we're fortunate enough to have a variety of different divisions now. It's it's pretty specialized. So if you have basic gear and you come out and want to shoot in limited or trooper or some, you know, depending on what match you go to, uh, outside the three gun nation series, there's usually something for you. Um, a CCW gun, if you have the you know mag capacity. To run a stage or multiple magazines, uh, you know, pump shotgun, uh, an AR with iron sights, uh, you can get through a match, and you can see if you like it without going out and spending a bunch of money before you, uh, you know, really understand the game. But yeah, you can definitely do it. Um, there's there's a ton of opportunity too. There's there seems to be matches everywhere now, um, you know, across the country. That's something else too that we generally ask the guests. So if you guys are okay with answering the question, that's great. If you're not, that's okay as well. Um, start with Keith. What do you uh, What do you like to carry? Oh, is my uh, off duty CCW well, pistol? Oh, CCW. Oh, I love my car PM9 in the in a, in a front pocket and a little, little uh, DeSantis holster. DeSantis. Uh, yeah. That gun. I'll tell you what. Um, headshots out to 15. Uh, 
eight round capacity. Uh, I could shoot like you know 17, 18 splits with it and get hits. Uh, and here's the thing about a CCW gun: I've got a ton of guns. All right, but I want something I'm going to carry because having a gun is better than having no gun. So I'm not going to carry something that that you know would just offend somebody rather than putting them down. So I think nine millimeter is probably the the lowest in terms of the platforms of the the one I would carry. So you know I don't dip down into the three A's and stuff. Although you know modern ammunition has made those better. Uh, I don't carry 22s, etc. But the nine mil I think is is pretty darn good. The car is just a nice gun. They're a little pricey now. I mean I bought mine back in the day. It was below 500. Now they're they're kind of way up there. But uh, that gun with access to it in my pocket, um, you know it's a you know a two second job to go in there and get it and be shooting. Uh, and, and the key is this, and, and I sold all my airweight revolvers and all the other stuff I used to have when I you know, became a cop 20 years ago. Um, have a gun that you're willing to practice with. Because if you've got a revolver that burns your hand every time you shoot it, so you shoot three or four rounds and you say, yeah, this is good because it's just a belly gun. I'm only going to shoot at arm's length. Um, most law enforcement you know, uh, encounters are within, you know, like five feet and people are shooting and missing half the time. So don't get the idea that you can not practice and, and still be able to hit something. So find a gun that you like to shoot, that is fun to shoot, that you want to practice with, that you can master and go out and practice with it on a regular basis. So under stress, you can access it and get what you're trying to hit. Uh, that would be my key to it. No matter what you're carrying, have it be something that you're willing to practice with, that you do practice with, and that you uh, carry with you, uh, you know, majority of the time. And the car PM9, that's the one that has the slightly bit better trigger, correct? The CM9 uh, is a little bit le a little bit heavier. Yes, it is. Okay. And Chris, did you have a an answer for that? I have a Glock 19. Um, I actually shot my first USPSA match with that gun, and. You know, I mentioned I shot a local pistol match a couple of weeks ago. I shot my local pistol match with that gun. So uh, the thing I like about the 19, it's a little bigger. And there you go. It's a little bigger than the car. I actually have one of those, but I don't you know, have it out regularly. Uh, you know, that's a real gun. Um, you know, it's small enough to be concealable and carry if you need to, but it is a you know, high-capacity, real handgun that you can use for a lot of different things. And so I've always really liked that thing. And if, and if that doesn't work out, you can always get the Predator Tactical, <laughs> high-capacity high, high 9-millimeter. Uh, Very practical, yes. Yeah, so you guys, you guys aren't carrying your $8,000 custom 1911s for CCW, of course. I can't get uh, this in my pants, no. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to pistol whip somebody with this thing. I might knock a sight. <laughs> All right. You got any more live questions, Steve? Um, you know, I haven't even checked. Let me take a quick look here. Most embarrassing match moment or story? We'll start with Chris, and that's coming from our buddy Jesse again. Oh, wow. So he's probably already knows yours, Chris. You know, I, that's funny. I, nothing really comes to mind. I mean, 3-Gun is kind of a... I, I, people ask me about it, and I say it's kind of like a three-day-long car crash because there's no... The thing about pistol matches is you can, you can, you can be perfect. You can have a perfect stage. I, I think that particularly in the Outlaw stuff, there's no such thing, so I don't know. I mean, I'm constantly embarrassed by mistakes that I make, so um, I don't know. I may have to come back to that. All right. I'm going to start off by saying that this shotgun has, has, has uh, saved me from my uh, worst match moment, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, what that is in a second. But if you this, – this one here, the Benelli M2, put together by Terran Tactical Innovation, all right, with a little match saver on the side here, this is uh, – this has saved me from future embarrassment with a nice Nordic tube on the front. Um, all right, my most embarrassing moment. I'm shooting in the professional series on TV, and uh, I used to, prior to owning this gun, I used to actually uh, put a Band-Aid on my left thumb for loading the shotgun. Now, if you, the way I look at it is this. If you shoot a gun that recoils too much, or if you do something that hurts you while you're training, it just is going to keep you from wanting to do it aggressively. And your subconscious is always going to say, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do it. So you tend to not practice it, or when you do practice it, you kind of half-ass it. So I always put a Band-Aid on in practice so I could really shove the shells in uh, on my weak-handed shotgun loading and not have it hurt my thumb. So I kind of got uh, used to doing that, and it was kind of my way to not feel any pain while I was loading the gun. All right, so last year at uh, 
the Pro Series match in West Virginia. Uh, we had a stage where we had to shoot uh, some rifle, pick up our shotgun, and you could uh, shoot, you know, shoot it dry, then, then shoot the last few targets with your handgun. But there were some some long uh, shots that we were gonna, that I was gonna take with my shotgun, and then a bunch of small plates I was gonna shoot with the shotgun. And uh, I just crushed the rifle part. Shot probably one of the best rifle stages I'd shot in my life. Ditched the gun, and actually, as I'm running to pick up my shotgun, I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna win this stage because I've got enough rounds in the in the gun, and all i got to do is, uh, you know, top it off with two, and I'll be able to finish this, and I'll walk away with, with a stage win. So I, I access two rounds as I'm running up to grab my shotgun. I grab it. I shove the two rounds in the gun. I come up to shoot, and nothing happens. And I look down, and the Band-Aid from my left thumb is now in the action of my gun. And I, I look at it for about half a second and figure out there's no way I'm going to get it out. I put down my rifle, I put down the shotgun, and now I've got uh, two poppers at like 50 yards to shoot, and then a bunch of really small steel about 15 to 17 yards out. And I also realized that uh, prior proper planning would help me out because I only have about half the rounds in my handgun that I should have had. I didn't top off the mag all the way because there was no way I was going to use it. So when I drew the gun, I knew uh, it would be uh, real hairy. About, if I missed any rounds, I probably wouldn't be able to finish the stage. So I, I drew the handgun. And I was able to get through and knock down all the targets. And then everybody, you know, crowded around afterwards with the cameras. Oh, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I'm trying to uh, quickly get this Band-Aid out of the action of my gun so no one sees it. But, of course, everybody <laughs> saw it. And that was a nice talk of the match. And uh, you know, I got a lot of, uh, lot of uh, fun uh, comments after that. But uh, you know what was interesting? It, when I switched over to the Benelli platform and Taryn uh, did up my guns, uh, I no longer have to use a Band-Aid. So you live, you learn. What do you got, Chris? I think the Benelli is uh, there's kind of a common theme here. Uh, Keith and I basically run a very similar shotgun. Uh, mine is from Accurate Iron, Mike Cyrus uh, in uh, Jones, Oklahoma. Uh, Nordic component extension, just like his gun. Uh, there are a few, you know, Terran builds a very good gun as well. There are a few preeminent shotgun builders. I think we run two of the best shotguns, you know, in in three gun uh, with the kind of common vein in the in the M2. Uh, this is really really the best gun there is for what we do. I have a quick question on touching on that subject real quick. Uh, a big Facebook following has been built up for salient arms and they're messing or messing around with m2s a bit what do you guys think about their products well um salient was uh, taron basically taron butler uh who's now running taron tactical he uh he started with those guys in business initially and uh they uh designed some stuff together and made some guns uh taron has uh, an offshoot on his own now um I think he uh, might have stolen a couple of gunsmiths away from over there and uh, when he started up his own uh, business. And they're making stuff that is uh, awesome, you know, base pads for the different guns, uh, all the mods for the shotgun. Taron's kind of stepped it up. He uh, He's having you know, a lot of stuff prefab, so when he gets your gun in, he can just install the parts, function, fire it, and get it back to you, you know, within a week. It's kind of crazy. Where the other guys are taking a long time, and uh, Taron's, by doing that, Taron's also lowering the cost. So... Salem makes some beautiful guns, but uh, you know, check out the price point and uh, bounce it around a little bit and see uh, you know where your money's best spent. Do you guys want to touch on the handguns that you shoot? Yeah, absolutely. I've got mine right here. This is uh, my five-inch nine-millimeter STI. Uh, this is built by Mike Cyrus at, as well at Accurate Iron. Uh, Mike is. Uh, just an artist with the 2011. Uh, these guns are, you know, this is the gun for the game. This is what you want. Um, and three gun nine is, you know, the gun of choice. We all kind of run double stack nine millimeters. But uh, this is his kind of competition package, uh, 2011. All right, Keith, what do you have over there? I've got the uh, Predator Tactical from uh, Matt Burkett in Arizona. Uh, you know what? Matt's a, a new sponsor. I shot with him all last year in the Pro Series and. Got to play uh, with the, the gear he was shooting at the time. Uh, it's uh, topped off with some Terran Tactical base pads on, on top of some SV mags, which, you know, when Terran puts them together, I can get 24 in them sometimes, you know, when I press real hard. So that's something that's, that's real helpful. Uh, the gun, uh, Matt uh, talked me into trying uh, a bushing barrel gun, 
which is uh, I've been using bowl barrels for uh, the last few years, and I was a little uh, skeptical because I'd never really ran uh, a bushing barrel gun. So he sent this one out, and I found it's a it's a lot lighter uh, than uh, all the other guns I was running with bowl barrels, and it didn't have any more recoil the way they got it set up. Uh, he's got some excellent guns with us, a lot of guys from. Uh, Formerly with SBI, etc. They put together a great gun, and uh, I was real happy with this because, as I said, I was talking about earlier about all the practice you do and the tendonitis you built up. Now this gun is a lot lighter, and it's a lot easier to uh, you know pick up and drive around and draw and practice with than uh, some of the other guns I've owned. Um, although the other guns I've had been tremendously accurate and uh, great guns of the past, but this one uh, I really like. Uh, he, you know, Matt and the guys there at Predator Tactical are putting together some good gear. So we're we're at about I don't know about 15 minutes out until we uh, conclude here. Um, I am gonna do the lightning round, which has gained popularity here. It's just one, you know, just quick answers, lightning quick. We got some got some gun stuff and we got some non-gun stuff in there. It's about I got seven questions today. So we're gonna do uh, Glock versus M&P. If you guys you had to choose to, one, who you want to start with? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with Chris here. Glock versus M and P. If you if you didn't have that custom gun, and you had to choose one, a Glock or an M and P, what are you going with? I in in competition M and P. I shot an M and P in production. And there you go. The M and P finally gets one over the Glock. That was shocking. <laughs> what do you got, Keith? You're gonna have two. Uh, you know, once now the Glock's actually got a back strap. My hands are big, and uh, this part of my hand when I was shooting the Glock would wind up on my glasses. Because you, when I draw a Glock quickly, uh, it would ride up and, and push up, and that part would uh, be pushing over the back of that little, what they call a beaver tail, and uh, the slide would run over it. And, and so I got away from shooting the Glocks for that reason. Got into the m and um, shot in production for a couple years. Uh, enjoy it. It's a good gun. Uh, you can drop in parts. Uh, there's some great kits out there to make it a really uh, fun gun to shoot, and, and it's extremely accurate. Uh, I don't think you can miss uh, either way. And I think uh, here's, the, here's the real selling point for shooting production. It's easier to reload than anything else out there. Yep. There you go. Dang, two for the M&P. That's heartbreaking. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and I, this is a, it's kind of an inside joke what we got going on Facebook here, but I don't know even know if you guys have these restaurants where you are, but Chipotle or Moe's? Now, they're both burrito spots. Which one do you prefer? You know, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with Chipotle. We had a Moe's here, but it closed, so I have no Moe's choice. Moe's closed. Yeah, that, that, was a, that, was, that was the health department, Chris. Yeah, I go with Chipotle. <laughs> and I'm a big yeah. burrito fan, you know, the Garcia part of me, you know, loving the burritos, and Chipotle is awesome. Nice. Totally redeemed yourself. Yes. I was about to say, never bringing these guys back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a. Uh, of course, I pre this is pretty much just you know an easy answer. But AR versus the AK. I mean, let's say we're not in competition. Let's say you just wanted to buy one rifle for the home. Are you going with the AR still, or are you going with an AK? Staying with the AR on my end. Uh, uh, you know, I love the AR. It's a it's a great platform, and you can do anything you want with it. Uh, that being said, the AK not a bad deal, especially uh, if you got to punch a hole in something. There you go. Uh, blondes or brunettes? Definitely oh, brunettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, definitely brunette. Yeah, my wife's going to watch this later. Absolutely. <laughs> Play it safe. Nice. What do you got, Chris? Definitely brunettes on my end as well. Nice. Uh, it's, that's nine, Jessica. 9 <laughs> millimeter or 40? What are we trying to do with it? Yeah, there you go. Um, let's say CCW. You know, I, I, earlier when I was talking about the gun I carry, it's chambered in nine because I, I think it's good enough. Uh, you know, when I can draw the thing and, and make a headshot with it, uh, you know, there's nothing up there that's going to stop in. Uh, you know, and I can shoot 15, 16, 17 splits with it and put a bunch of rounds on a guy. I think it's good, especially some good Hornady, you know, critical defense ammo that I carry in it. But, uh, you know, 40, you know, it's a compromise as well for capacity. I carry a 45 at work. Uh, just because I like to have a half inch, you know, and uh, you know, there's the, the way you stop somebody is 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 letting air in and uh, letting blood come out. So make it punching half inch holes isn't a bad deal either. All right, what do you got, Chris? You're up nine to forty. 
I, you know, I'm kind of a nine millimeter guy as well. Um, you know, like I said, there there are compromises in every direction. I think as I shoot more um, defensive handguns, the calibers have gotten smaller. The better shooter I become, the more I, I you know feel like it's about shot placement. And you know, I think you can put a lot of nine millimeter where you want it to go pretty quickly. Yeah, why well, do you want all that extra recoil with the uh, with the forty? That's what I've always said. Yeah. Um, here's Last question here, and this is another thing we can joke around on Facebook all the time. Um, using an up Lula or speed loader to load your mags. No. I you, always thought yeah. those things came with a limited edition box of tampons. Oh, let me but, tell you right now. Um, I, I so you. it's either up Lulas or using the thumbs, old fashioned. I tell you, let me let me let me field this one, Chris, because I teach in the police academy out here. In California. <laughs> And these guys show up with these little plastic things, come to the Glock box and all that other crap. And I just look at them with disgust. I'm like, if you can't push that round down, you know, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be a cop first off, because you don't want to push a damn 40 cal round into a magazine. I mean, what are you going to do in a fight? But no, uh, you know, don't use that stuff. Push your damn thumb in there, and it's eventually you build up a callus, and it's all good. It's like anything else. You put the work in, and it's going to be worth it. So there you go. Uh, I'm, since we're about now uh, about eight minutes out to the end of the show, again I'm going to wheel down the the sponsors and the giveaway again. AtlantaArmsAndAmmo.com, fifty dollar gift card to to get anything on their website. I just picked up a bunch of ammo from them today. Uh, TacticalLife.net's giving away a short sleeve T-shirt um, and a sticker to put on your car or the man cave. Also, we got. Ranbrands.com. They are uh, giving away a bottle of. I'm going to give away this bottle here. It's a two-ounce bottle of CLP, lubricant protectant, made in the USA. Very good stuff. I use it on all my guns. Um, you all. We also, for those of you guys who don't win it, you guys have 15% um, off using TAC15. That's TAC15. We also are going to be giving away the Vertex hats that make you a Grandmaster automatically. Courtesy of Mr. Anderson. Phil Schreier from the USPSA will immediately send you your GM card if you have this. <laughs> nice. And uh, we do have that 40% uh, Vertex code that we would mention. I think I've written it down here. Code TMVTX40KG gets you 40% off. What website is that? Is that directly through Vertex or is it no. a special website? WearVertex.com. Yeah, wear wear vertex. vertex. Good stuff. Wear, I'll tell you guys, that, that is, it's 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 really good quality and it uh, it lasts. That's that amazing. site's uh, that site's going to be changing soon as well. They're bringing out uh, they're reintroducing a new site with a lot more content, with a bunch of uh, shooting information, uh, a lot of pro tip segments that Keith and I and the other guys are going to be doing. So, uh, you know, we talked about instruction earlier. That's going to be a good resource for really everyone in the future to, uh, to get information about what we're doing and, and ways to improve your shooting as, along with the, you know, the great gear that they sell. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we're going to conclude any sponsors uh, you have. I know you guys have a lot. That can be a show in itself. Mm -hmm. But if you guys want to run down some sponsors, maybe some websites, some forums, anything you guys are involved in, this is your time now. Well, you know what? Um, for me, uh, Honestly, uh, what Chris touched on earlier, I only go with sponsors that I, I like their gear, and it's something that's going to improve my shooting as opposed to uh, something that they give me for free that's going to make it harder for me to do my job. So I go with uh, JP Enterprises rifles in uh, 223 and 308, Predator Tactical Handguns, uh, the Benelli M2, uh, all that stuff. Uh, the Benelli's uh, all the custom work done by uh, Taron Butler at Terran Tactical Innovation. Warren uh, Ramp Scope. Uh, scope mounts, uh, great stuff, uh, hardcore. Let me tell you, last year I flew to Florida for the first three-gun nation match. I showed up, my uh, gun came tumbling out of the uh, the carousel, went out to the range. Uh, there was a big gash in my scope, and there was a uh, my actual AR pistol grip was broken. You know, it was it was canted sideways. So I went out to the range. I'm like, you know, I've got like an hour before uh, stages are through with walkthroughs, so I got to make sure it's zeroed. The scope didn't lose zero. You know, the scope is tough. The Swarovski is, is a great scope, the Z6i. The uh, Warren Mount, uh, I've traveled with the same you know, same setup for uh, three years in a row and uh, have yet to have uh, the airlines destroy it, and it doesn't lose zero. It's it's great stuff. Hornady Ammo, uh, if you if you got to hit the target uh, and you want your guns to run consistently, uh, take a look at the Hornady Ammo. Uh, 
uh, get yourself some offset sights from uh, Duke Defense for your rifle in case your optic goes down or you want to shoot the uh, close quarter stuff. And uh, obviously Vertex is something that we uh, we really like to uh, be in when we're out there on the range. Uh, Oakley glasses, um, West Tone hearing protection, and uh, you know I'm sure there's uh, somebody I'm leaving out, but uh, I'll let Chris uh, Chris speak for a moment, and then I'll go and order component tubes on your uh, on your shotgun as well as uh, one of the match savers uh, on the side so you can load the shotgun. Uh, when you when you're stupid enough to run out of rounds in the middle of the stage, or you know, <laughs> yeah, Tischhauser said he never runs his shotgun dry, and those are for guys who run the shotgun dry. Like, just just so we're clear on that, Jesse's never told the truth. In his life. <laughs> so I shot with him the entire season last year. Uh, I've seen him. I've seen him not only run his shotgun dry. I've seen his run his shotgun into the ground. You know, just literally <laughs> throwing it down because it wasn't you know, functioning was supposed to. It'd show up to the range without magazines. You know, ammo. Everyone so on. <laughs> start shooting without his hearing protection. So, you know, obviously, we've got to take that in some context. <laughs> what do you got, Chris? You got any sponsors over there or any websites yeah, for them? Yeah, uh, Obviously, Vertex. Again, that website is wearvertex.com. Uh, Rainier Arms. Uh, Rainier is a uh, supplier from everything uh, from high-end AR-15s to parts to any kind of gear that you, uh, for the shooting sports or even outdoor sports. Uh, Belay Tactical. Uh, they are a kind of a newcomer into the tactical eyewear market. They have some tremendous stuff for um, shooting sports, for law enforcement and military applications. Uh, Nordic Components, Keith and I kind of share a sponsor there. Uh, tremendous shotgun accessories, everything you need to make your shotgun three-gun ready. Uh, MGM Targets, um, they sponsor just about every match in three-gun. They are the best target by far in the industry, and they are one of the tools that I use to, to get better every single time I'm at the range. Uh, AR15.com. Uh, very good resource for all things gun or three gun. Uh, three Gun Nation uh, has a huge section on AR15.com that includes a lot of pro tips and uh, you know uh, banter about the sport and everything you can imagine. Uh, Accurate Iron, uh, Accurate builds uh, obviously custom 2011s, uh, tremendous three gun shotguns, and uh, there's Mike's one of the preeminent gun builders in the country. Uh, the United States Shooting Academy. Uh, USSA is host to the Three Gun Nation Pro Series. Uh, the large part of the matches have been at this range, and they offer training and uh, you know facilities for all sorts of uh, federal agencies and law enforcement, as well as uh, you know one of the best uh, ranges in the country for really just about anything. A couple more pieces of gear, guys. The uh, ELS from uh, Safari Land. You get everything you need from Safari Land in terms of. Uh, how to set up your three-gun belt with the quick detach stuff from the ELS fits on your mag pouches. You can reposition stuff. What's really nice about this uh, is the fact that you can uh, reconfigure all your stuff without taking the belt off, and uh, that's nice because a lot of times you know you go through some effort to get these things cinched up in just the right place. It's nice to just pull stuff off real quick without having to redo everything. And uh, brownells.com, when you go to buy something and you want to uh, have it there and, and know they have it in stock and get it to your place as fast as possible and uh, don't have any issues and great prices, uh, take a look at Brownells. Excellent, excellent. Steve, you got anybody shout out real quick? You know, I got a bunch. Usually I kind of hold back here, but I'm going to throw out a bunch of companies real quick. Um, of course, I write for the armsguide.com, Faded Destiny's website, and my channel, Making Masterclass, here on YouTube. Also, I want to throw something out for Ridgeback Tactical. I'm doing a little bit of work for them right now, as well as Terran Tactical Innovations. I have some sites that I'm going to be reviewing for them on my channel. So, Terran Butler, awesome competitor, and I know him and Keith have uh, traded some amazing... Uh, Back and forth action over on Three Gun Nation. So that's uh, unlike the action that Chris and Jesse have. But yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there so, it is. Throw them out. I'll throw out Five Star Firearms, of course, one of our team sponsors, as well as TractionGrips.com. Right. Uh, excellent, excellent company. If you have a pistol and you want a little bit of extra grip on that pistol, they make an excellent product. Gotcha. There you go. Anthony's giving you a good a good preview there. So, excellent product for uh, a lot of different polymer pistols out there. And guys, in, ter in terms of training, if you take a look at practical practicalshootingacademy.com, 
That's sort of Ron Avery. He's doing a lot of work with Travis Haley now, as well as BennyCooley.com if you want to get into some training. Both those guys are tremendous. And if you want to have the biggest challenge in terms of a shooting school, take a look at Bill Rogers Shooting School. Um, just run a, run a search for Bill Rogers Shooting School. Uh, there's 125 point call he does at that school. It's all reactive steel that actually moves and disappears if you don't hit it in time. And it's probably the most challenging school you could go to. And it's uh, humbled a lot of people over the years. And I believe uh, maybe two people, uh, Rob Latham and Bill Rogers, have shot perfect scores uh, on that in the last you know 25 years. So wow. if you want a real challenge, and, it's <clears throat> and uh, the, the weather's uh, a little humid, a little hot, uh, but Bill's a, uh, an awesome instructor as well. And you won't miss uh, going. Rob out. Latham has such an incredible, uh, just his his whole, uh, you know, his reputation is un unmatchable. And he's a nice guy. When you see Rob, I mean, every shooter who gets, actually every shooter in the game period, whether you're good or not, should conduct themselves the way Rob does. Rob, uh, at the range, he's always having fun. He's laughing. He's helping other guys out. He talks to everybody. And, uh it's uh, really cool to see because the guy's just, he's a legend and, uh, you know, he deserves all the accolades because he truly is a, a class act. Consummate professional. All right. I'm going to run down a couple here. Obviously, the ones Rich from Sinbad396. He's the south, he's the northeast sales manager of RAN uh, CLP. Um, this is from RANSBrands.com. Again, go there if you guys are looking for a good uh, CLP. Uh, they have it for you. Um, we'll be giving this away in the giveaway, so if you guys want to enter in the giveaway, this is your last chance to do so. We're going to be giving away this two-ounce bottle. Um, again, AtlantaArmsAndAmmo.com, $50 gift card. I want to thank them for contributing to you know last five shows, actually. So AtlantaArmsAndAmmo.com, TacticalLife.net, uh, where you get your, your latest apparel, T-shirts, pro-gun shirts, they're also doing us uh, vinyl stickers for the back of the car, the boat, the man cave. Good company. Yes, uh, I'm gonna give them a shout, and that's that's it. I think that's all I got here. I got one more link for you guys. Uh, we have, haven't actually mentioned tonight. ThreeGunNation.com. Uh, Keith Definitely. and I both obviously are pretty heavily featured there. We both write articles for Three Gun Nation's e-magazine. Uh, go to ThreeGunNation.com or their Facebook page and sign up for the e-magazine. It's honestly one of the. It's free. Um, it's uh, out every two months and has a lot of information about our sport, how to get into it, um, you know, yeah, match information, equipment information. Uh, it's a tremendous resource and it's absolutely free. And they have a spectacular YouTube channel as well. Yes, they do. Yes, they yeah. do. And guys, tune into the show. I mean, it's on. There you go. Started, um, you know, Thursdays. Uh, you know, check your local schedule. I think it's ten o'clock Eastern. But uh, the show, you know, it's one of those ones that actually shows real guys shooting in competition. Uh, it's not all <laughs> set up. So you see the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, it's it's not perfect every time through. But, uh, you know, it, it's the real life. Real life isn't perfect. Uh, but like, just a quick shout-out to, to Pete Brown and Chad Adams, who started the show, and Pat Kelly, who's on it now, and Rob Romero, who's running the, running the, uh, the, the stages and, and setting up the matches. The guys are doing a great job, and it just keeps getting better. Um, you know, like I said, hundred thousand dollars worth of prizes sitting on the wall behind me uh, because of the efforts that they saw what they could. You know, something wasn't there and, and created it, and it's. Uh, I think it's really made the sport just really boom. All right. Lastly, we're going to go over the Rand CLP 15% discount code. If you guys aren't lucky enough to win it, TAC15. That's TAC15. 15% 15 off. 40% off at WearVertex.com. That's that code is. I'll put it in the description box below a direct link to that website along with a lot of the sponsors these guys are saying so you guys can go there and get there on one click that code is TMVTX40KG for 40% off Vertec gear the hats from Chris Chris Anderson thank you for the hats that's someone's gonna be lucky to wear one of those during a match and I think we're gonna end the show I want to thank you guys for watching Keith thank you Chris thanks for coming on thanks, uh, guys. next show I don't like to announce the the, the uppercomer because of the scheduling, but I know we will have Team Stag Arms in the house uh, eventually later down the month. Um, Athena Lee, someone we're talking to, so we got a couple of uh, good shooters coming on board. And stay tuned for the Facebook page for the next guest on the show. We got some cowboy action coming up too. 
cowboy action stuff. Nice. Mm. I could never go around wearing the chaps, but I, I think you could just go out with Wrangler jeans or something. You know what, man? And, and as silly as it seems, you got Randy Rogers coming and dominating in, in the women's yeah. scene, coming That's from true. cowboy action. She usually he, dominates. He's the big chaps guy. guy. Oh yeah, uh, I'm wearing some right now, but uh, I can't show it to you because that's all I got on down there. Keith, I want to end the show. Try to end the show with a bang. You have a dummy 12 gauge round in there, Keith. Uh, I've got some, yeah. Let's see how fast you can uh, reload with that match saver. Oh, let me grab one. Hold on. Let's end the show with uh, there we go. some little uh, match saver Sheboygan or bang, however you want to call it. Who needs cowboy action when you got Keith Garcia action? Hmm. Yeah, I think he did a video. I think he did a YouTube video on that, and it's amazingly quick on how fast you can load an extra round if you run the shotgun dry. So probably something every shotgun should have on the side of it as a match saver. I agree, but you know it's not just the uh, it's not just the one side. I got them on both sides now because it's uh, it's kind of nice when you're starting the stage to put one on the. Uh, for me, it's the left side. So when I pick up the gun, I just I just grab, it, slide it in, and then I'm off, moving across the stage. And that way, uh, you know, instead of because most of the time we can only start with nine, so it's kind of nice when uh, when you can shove an extra one in there uh, on the way uh, out of the gate. So that's that's something that I, I like to do. Um, and if you happen to run dry, it's uh, real that's nice. it. Holy shit! <laughs> real nice to get that round in there. Um, the opposite, the other way I was doing it before, it would take me, you know. A good, you know, second and three quarters to, to do it on a good good note. Now I can do it under a second and get that right. last Yeah, that so that's, match around in there every time. That's going to be it, guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in again. Stay tuned for episode six. Follow us on Facebook at theshootersmindset.com, and there I would post all the information and updates for the next show and as well as the next coming guests. So thank you guys again, Chris, Keith, Steve. Thanks for joining me again, and we're out. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.